कृष्ण कृष्ण हरे 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 राम हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे ओम ज्ञान मिंद जनाशलाकय चक्षुर मिलित तस्म श्री गुरव नम श्री चैतन्य मनोभीष्ट स्थापित ये नूतले स्वयं रूपा कदा ददा स्वापदाति वंदेहम श्री गुरु श्रीयुता पदकमल श्री गुरु वैष्णव श्री रूप सागृजाता सहगना रघुनाथ तम सजीव साइत सवदूत परिजना सहित कृष्ण चैतन्यीराधा कृष्ण पदा सहगना ललिता श्री विशाखा हे कृष्ण करुणा सिंधु दीन बंदो जगत्पते गोपेशा गोपिका कांत राधा कांत नमोस्तुते तप्त कांचना गौरंगी राधे वृंदावनेश्वरी ऋषभानुसुते देवी प्रणमा हरि प्रिय मंचकलपतरुभ कृपा सिंधुभ्य पति पावनेभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नम श्रीकृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधार शिवासादि गौर भक्त बृंद हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्णा हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे सो थैंक यू अलंकार प्रभु फॉर दिस वंडरफुल ऑपरचुनिटी आई डिड नॉट प्रिपेयर सो वेल बिकॉज I don't want to blame you, but I got this uh, time a little short. But uh, whatever um, I can do to help to serve uh, this wonderful program, I'm very happy to do. Please uh, forgive my mistakes or uh, lack of preparation, but I'm going to do my best. So I believe Prem Vilas Prabhu left at two point two point three two, right? Okay. So. Um, i'm going to start with uh, 2.2.33 as prabhu already mentioned the theme lord brahma concludes what is the best path of devotional service most auspicious and beneficial path beneficial path so far the context is that we have been discussing about different types of liberations mm-hmm. different yogis get liberated in different ways and then this is the verse that we have been discussing sure so let's chant the words नाहे अथो ज्ञाति स्थिवापंता संसृता वासुदेव भगवती भक्ति यथो बिकॉज ऑफ द टाइम फैक्टर विल कीप गोइंग राइट अदरवाइज आई विल लेट ऑल ऑफ यू चैंट ऑल्सो translation for those who are wandering in the material universe there is no more auspicious means of deliverance than what is aimed at in the direct devotional service of lord krishna purport as will be clarified in the next verse devotional service or, or direct bhakti yoga is the only absolute and auspicious means of deliverance from the grip of material existence 
there are many indirect methods for deliverance from the clutches of material existence, but none of them is an easy and an auspicious and auspicious as Bhakti Yoga. The means of Jnana and Yoga and other allied disciplines are not independent in delivering a performer. Such activities help one to reach the stage of Bhakti Yoga after many, many years. In the Bhagavad Gita, it is said, who those who are attracted to the impersonal feature of the Absolute are liable to many troubles in the pursuit of the desired goal. And the empiricist philosophers searching after the Absolute Truth realize the importance of Vasudeva realization as all in all after many, many births. As far as yoga systems are concerned, it is also said in the Bhagavad Gita that amongst the mystics who pursue the absolute truth, the one who is always engaged in the service of the Lord is the greatest of all. And the last instruction of Bhagavad Gita advises fully surrendering onto the Lord, leaving aside all other engagements or different processes for self-realization and liberation from material bondage. And the purport of all Vedic literatures is to induce one to accept the transcendental loving service of the Lord by all means. As already explained in the text of Srimad Bhagavatam, either direct Bhakti Yoga or the means which ultimately culminate in the Bhakti Yoga without any tinge of fruitative activity constitute the highest form of religion. Everything else is simply a waste of time for, for the performer. Sridhar Srila Sridhara Swami and all other Acharyas, like Jiva Goswami, agreed that Bhakti Yoga is not only easy, simple, natural, and free from trouble, but is the only source of happiness for the human being. Hare Krishna. So, um, in this verse, um, it is described what is the direct, easiest way of uh, attaining um, perfection or um, devotional service? So, um, in the earlier verses, I didn't. I, I had uh, tried to go through a little bit before. Um, there was a discussion, I think, about what are the other forms of yoga and uh, what is the outcome of following such a path um, and um, how it is benefiting uh, the, the, the living entities, the human beings in particular, etc. So uh, here, uh, Brahma rather very staunchly establishes that um, the direct path of Bhakti Yoga is the most auspicious and the best form. Um, and it says that all other forms or forms of uh, yoga or practices or any religious paths um, where bhakti is not central is going to lead to simply it's, it's going to be a waste of time. So that's the conclusion he arrives at. But prior to this, let's analyze where it starts a little bit uh, context. Um, so Sukadev uh, Goswami is uh, speaking to King Parikshit on the request of all the sages. Um, he is assembled on the um, on the um, uh, shores of uh, Ganges, and uh, the discussion happens. So um, Parikshit Maharaj, as you know, is the emperor of the world at that time. Today we cannot say that there is one emperor for the world. And even those who tried to conquer, like the British, were not able to sustain that level of control over other regions where they conquered. And even if they conquered, they had to give it up at some point. Uh, people revolted and took back all the kingdom. Whereas Parikshit Maharaj was able to establish his prominence over the entire world at that time. And, and we all know the story how he got cursed and he had only seven days to live. So he decides to renounce everything and um, gives it to his son as they would do in the ancient days where the kings pass it on to uh, their sons. But they make sure the sons are well trained. Right. Um, so we know the story of Prachetas, how 
um, the king um, Prashni Barishat. Prashni Barishat uh, made sure <coughs> that before the Prachetas took, took over the kingdom, they were well trained. So they grew up in a very uh, opulent atmosphere. But then he said, before you rule, you should be firmly established in the path of self-realization. Before you become a king, you need to make sure that you understand uh, the core values of spirituality, you understand who the Supreme Lord is, and you understand that your constitutional position is to serve the Lord. So what did he do? He sent them all to the forest uh, proactively and uh, made sure that they went through all the austerities. And uh, finally, they got to meet Lord Vishnu, according to the story. And Lord Vishnu, one thing he appreciated, besides giving them blessing, is the fact that they were very unified. And that's a lesson for us in Kali Yuga. In Kali Yuga, quarrel, age of quarrel and hypocrisy, it is very hard to do one thing. What is that? Cooperation. Exactly, cooperation. Um, our mind is agitated. We have short period of life. Uh, we have too many things to do, too many distractions. And uh, on top of that, we have our false ego, which is very prominent, which is doesn't allow us to uh, cooperate with each other. And if you see all the problems in this world, both in the material world, as well as to some extent we observe in our own daily lives, how this is becoming very difficult, although we are in the path of devotional service. So, Vishnu, in that particular context, in that story, appreciated all the sons of Prachini Barishat because they were very unified. And that's a lesson we have to take uh, in, in our daily lives too. Uh, as this moment is growing, as we are building a bigger temple, as our congregation is continuing to develop, as we have uh, diverse devotees with different gurus, this becomes uh, very central to us and we have to take this very seriously and it starts with us right so um, having said that so they went through all that they got the blessings of Vishnu they came back and they ruled but what happened to Prashini Barishat in the meantime you have any idea when they were away in the forest does anybody know he got entangled a man who was in the path of devotional service, who was a very um, a strict follower, uh, you know, he was uh, dedicated his life to the Supreme Lord. Uh, as they were in the forest, he got distracted and he got entangled. But the Lord is very merciful. Uh, after all, the Lord wants us to go through a lot of purification in our lives. So when these kind of things happen and we get entangled, we need not have to be discouraged. But it is suffice to say, we learn our lessons as part of that and we realize. So the Lord lets you go through that path so that we can become realized as to what this entanglement really means and how it can uh, attack anybody. So the Lord finally comes and saves him also. He sends Narada Muni and Narada Muni preaches to him very well and Prashni Barishat comes out of that uh, phase. So, um, Back to King Parikshit, he um, renounced immediately all his wealth, all his fame, uh, everything, opulence, and he surrendered to the will of the Lord. And the will of the Lord was, it was for him to hear the glories of the Lord as he's going to uh, pass away in seven days. Um, and he renounced. So what is real renunciation? Prabhupada explains, right? In so many purports, so many lectures, real renunciation, uh, as it comes from Rupa Goswami, is not you just abandon everything what you have and you start begging. I recently heard in Gujarat, I don't know if you heard the news, there was this, uh, in our estimate, a multi-millionaire or a billionaire uh, Jain family, you heard that story. So what happened to them? They decided to give all their wealth away and now they want to beg on the street. Mm -hmm. Am I right in saying that? Yeah, I, I, 
know, in Indian culture, the tradition, they pull their each and every hair back and mm. to become bald. Mm -hmm. So that's my. Like, <laughs> so yeah. yeah. So again, uh, I don't want to be critical of because I don't know the whole story. I only heard this much, uh, uh, Alankar Prabhu. But what I was thinking is, we, we know the definition of renunciation. Renunciation uh, is to use everything in the service of the Lord. If you have enough money, if you have wealth, you have fame, whatever it may be. So, um, so back to Parikshit Maharaj. So he uh, uh, renounced, renounced everything, and he was he was surrendered to the mood and to the will of the Lord. And this was a pastime where it's not only he wants to hear the glories of the Lord in this uh, last few days. It was also a lesson to this entire world. So um, having said that, here uh, in this uh, purport. We are trying to understand what is the, um, let's analyze the other paths, jnana, uh, jnana and yoga, uh, karma yoga, etc. So we have the, uh, the yoga ladder. We have gone through that in Bhagavad Gita. So um, when we follow the other paths, uh, uh, one thing that is for sure, and we heard this even in the uh, lecture recently given by the a uh, couple, you know, Varakadish Prabhu and Vishaka Mataji, that you may have, uh, you can perform all austerities, you can perform um, uh, <coughs> elaborate uh, yagyas, you can uh, be a master in yoga, you can be in Himalayas uh, chanting for, I um, mean, practicing meditation for thousands of years. But if you don't have that focus on whom you are, uh, whom you are serving, and what is your constitutional position? Everything becomes a waste of time. Now, we shouldn't say that these people are useless. That's my point. So you have three um, ways to attain God, right? Brahman, Paramatma, and the Bhagavan realization. And uh, a number of our uh, maharajas and monks prior to coming to Iskand, they were following Mayavad philosophy, not because they wanted to, it is just that's where they started. Some of them, I'm not saying all of them. And um, over a period of time, Krishna brought them to this path. So it's a progression, it's an evolution. And Krishna also says in Bhagavad Gita, after many, many, many years, such people will eventually come to the platform of appreciating Vasudeva or Krishna. So we shouldn't be critical of them. That's my point. Of course, we need to have the discrimination. We need to understand what these paths are. Um, eventually, they come to the path of uh, serving Krishna. So, um, having said that, we should not be tempted. And we should not um, think, you know, it has happened to me. That's why I'm saying this. You know, sometimes it appears when I'm looking at other uh, practices out there without mentioning names. Uh, it appears that it's they are, it's so easy. They don't have to go through a lot of uh, austerity. Of course, our path is simple. Don't get me wrong. But depending on our mind and our maturity, where we are, sometimes that other path seems to be very easy. And we tend to think, uh, how come they are doing this? Right? For example, in a Q&A with uh, His Holiness Radhanath Swami Maharaj, uh, this happened several years ago. A devotee at the end of the lecture asked, you're saying Mayavadis, um, you know, they, they don't really attain that uh, ananda because uh, they try to become one with Lord, but ultimately they fall down. So, uh, and you're saying that's not the best path. But look at these Mayavadis, they have the power to perform severe austerities. So, and we know that that power is coming from Krishna. So, how come we are following the path of Krishna, but they have more strength to follow austerities? And Maharaj explained in response to that is Hiranyakashipu. Hiranyakashipu, for 100 celestial years, that equates to millions of years, he was standing on one leg and he was performing austerities. But what happened to him? He got all the powers. 
he got all the boons but then after he got the boons he went back to his original ways right so and uh, he lost everything at the end he got killed so maharaj was making that point they may have severe strength for austerity they may perform wonderful feats they may even do mysticism which we may not be able to do but at the end because they are not focused in serving the lord the attitude of servitude is not there they will fall down so that's what we have to realize so all these other paths can give us fame can uh, take us to a, a very heightened level of uh, uh attention in this world people may even fall at our feet but ultimately it is it is to be known that it's not going to please the lord anything that pleases the lord is what we do and it has been firmly established that in bhakti yoga is where we are able to uh, not only serve the lord and other devotees effectively but we are able to please the lord um so that is the summary i have for this any uh, do you do discussion at the end or or, or you can have or we can do any questions or anything right something. yeah because of the time i'm just watching i had one question um sure in the purport um just about the meaning of this one phrase it says the means of jnana and yoga and other allied disciplines are not independent in delivering a performer and i was just wondering if you could elaborate on that more explain what that means exactly um can you tell me where exactly yeah yeah it's it's like fourth the third line. line yeah fourth line yeah the third line yeah or oh, uh, oh, the means of jnana and yoga yes. and all and other allied disciplines are not independent in delivering a performer like yeah so because they are independent of bhakti is what you need to get love for god ultimately to go back to the spiritual mm-hmm. like here so it's a, it helps you go ultimately you are saying that after many many births correct mm-hmm. right. vasudev sarvamiti sarvamiti i think that sentence you should read the uh, conjunction with the next sentence so just see such activities help one to reach the stage of ஒரு <laughs> also speak to this so at the end of the day anything we do two things right we need to have pleasure in whatever we do that's human nature right yeah you may have a little uh, austerity you may have to follow certain regulations but we won't stick to it if there is no pleasure so in all these other paths to a large extent there is no pleasure there is no happiness you know you're doing it as a matter of uh, you know you are able to control your senses you are able to control your breath you are able to do all that but at the end of the day when pleasure or ananda is missing you tend to deviate from that path and uh, i mean we all know this example how many of them ended up constructing schools hospitals doing service to humanity at large um but they lack that that uh, pleasure of serving the lord and reciprocation with the lord right so at the end of the day the lord is a person but in this path you cannot recognize that lord is a person am i right in saying that and you, you don't have any object of devotion you don't have object of love you know even in our day to day life you need to have a relationship with somebody i mean you cannot say i can be sitting in one house or room and i can do my own thing i don't have to interact with anybody of course there are some people we come across like that um but those are all exceptions right but typically we need uh, interaction and love so that's what is been stated in that verse thank you just one comment as you were talking about hirnikash mm-hmm. performing so much austerity and got so many powers 
But Pralad Maharaj, he didn't do any austerity. He just heard Bhagavatam and he was more powerful than him. More powerful. Sure. Right. That um, Pralad Maharaj says, yes, my Lord is in the pillar and the Lord fulfilled the words of his devotee. And right. Lord can do anything for his devotee, he's conquered by his devotee. So who's more powerful? Exactly. And he had that faith. That was when, like five years old. Yeah. Um, so he had five year old boy had was more powerful than his father. Um, okay. 2.2.34 Bhagavan Brahma Karishena Tri Anivikshaya Mansaya Tad Adya Vashyat Kutasto Rutir Atman Yato Bhavat Translation the great personality Brahma, with great attention and concentration of the mind, studied the Vedas three times, and after scrutinizingly examining them, he ascertained that attraction to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Sri Krishna, is the highest perform perfection of religion. Purport, Sri Sukadev Goswami is referring to the highest Vedic authority, Lord Brahma, who is the qualitative incarnation of Godhead. The Vedas were taught by, to Brahmaji in the beginning of the material creation. Although Brahmaji was to hear Vedic instructions directly from the personality of Godhead in order to satisfy the inquisitiveness of all prospective students of the Vedas, Brahmaji, just like a scholar, studied the Vedas three times, as generally done by the scholars. He studied with great attention, concentrating on the purpose of the Vedas, and after scrutinizingly examining the whole process, he ascertained that becoming a pure, unalloyed devotee of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Sri Krishna, is the topmost perfection of all religious principles. And this is the last instruction of Bhagavad Gita, directly presented by the Personality of Godhead. The Vedic conclusion is thus accepted by all the Acharyas, and those who are against this conclusion are only Veda Veda Rathas, as explained in Bhagavad Gita. Okay. So here, it, this goes on to expand on the previous verse where it's the previous verse we established that direct devotional service to the Lord is the most or the Bhakti Yoga is the most potent um, way to uh, engage in this particular Yuga that we live. So um, here it, there is some more explanation given as to how Brahma came to that conclusion. So a um, lot of people ask this question um, as to why uh, Bhakti Yoga is the best, right? Why can't we follow other forms of yoga? So um, one thing Brahma says here is um, Brahma was the first recipient of Vedic knowledge. We all know that. Um, he is also referred to as Atmabhu, right? He came from the navel or the of uh, Lord Vishnu. Garbhodakshaya Vishnu uh, on a lotus flower. But when he came, the world was very dark. He was not born by the natural process. He just took birth from the navel of the Lord. <clears throat> it was dark and it and uh, it was surrounded, he was surrounded by water in all directions. And he didn't know who he was, first of all, and what he was supposed to do in the darkness. And he was meditating on the Lord, Lord Vishnu. At that time, Vishnu appeared to him and he said, Tapa, right? Tapasya, do Tapasya. So here again, the, the emphasis on Tapasya is, you know, mentioned. Why? Again, not so much for Lord Brahma. He's the secondary creator. Um, he created all the universes, etc. Not so much for him, but general um, takeaway there for us, as I understand, is if we want to become purified in this path, because after all, um, Prem Sindhu Prabhu quotes this often, why do we, why are we here in this world? Because we turned away from Krishna. And we turned away from Krishna and Krishna says, okay, you want to enjoy independent of me. So I will create a world where you can go and do all this. Very similar to our uh, Disneyland. <laughs> So, 
uh, this is our Disneyland and we are riding on that uh, toy horse or whatever, I'm thinking that, you know, we are the uh, enjoyers uh, of this world. So the Lord is very merciful. He gave us this place, right? But then this is also referred to in many places within the scriptures as a hospital where we are getting purified. Why? Because we have these imperfect desires to begin with. And then accordingly, the Lord gives us the senses. And the next verse, you will give a little bit more detail on that. Um, the senses to enjoy these pleasures, because that's what we want. And the Lord is a merciful father and he gives that opportunity. But knowing that we will also suffer, right? But um, so in that in, um, imperfect condition of mind and senses, there is no way we are going to attain uh, purification. There is no way we are going to uh, understand and get enlightened. Even if we are given this pure knowledge, I mean, I can only relate to when I first started coming to uh, ISKCON and started understanding all this, I was not able to relate to a lot of these things. You know, um, So that is because I had other uh perceptions about life due to conditioning of so many things um my uh, definition of what is enjoyment and what is pleasure and who is lord was very different at that time so um i had to go through some austerity to begin with um that's where our four regulative principles comes and um beyond that we have to also control our tongue now Tongue is not only for eating, as we saw. And Prem Sindhu Prabhu, you said one devotee came to you and asked, why is in his khan? Everybody is so fat, right? Something like that. <laughs> um, so did it, it happen, right? Or I'm not remembering. So, um, and so I knew why I'm saying this very uh, clearly is Prem Sindhu Prabhu kept repeating that for in a few classes, this devotee came and asked me and uh, things like that. Anyway, um, but what I'm trying to say there is we may have delicious prasadam, but we also have to be careful in how we consume it. Uh, Dravida Prabhu also said this. He got knocked away by eating too much sweets in his early days, if you remember his recollection. Too much. In the beginning, he didn't see when you, when, the, when you are in the initial stages, when people are so hospitable to you, and it happens in his khan, right? And they serve you more prasadam and all that. I mean, it's so tasty, you go with the flow. Mm. But then he consumed a lot of sweets, is what he said in one lecture, and he couldn't uh, act properly after the meeting. He was dis disoriented, right? Uh, and then he made a conscious decision to control his diet and uh, all that. Um, so ex the, more importantly, more than just eating and all that, I think um, our tendency to criticize others or find fault with others, uh, you know, it develops subconsciously. I don't think we intentionally <clears throat> are that way as devotees. Uh, but there is that propensity to find fault in others and judge being very judgmental. Um, of course, that argument always comes, what if I'm in management and what am I supposed to do? But leaving that aside, in general, uh, it is said that the biggest downfall for a devotee uh, is having that ten tendency to criticize others. That criticism could also be at a very subtle level. Um, you know, we, we may not openly say a lot of things, but it's mounting in your mind and your it's culminating there. And then one point it just blows up without your knowledge because it's getting built up over a period of time. So we have to be very, very careful about the use of tongue of all the one of the uh, main things of all the senses. Of course, eating. Uh, the right food and prepared in the right mood helps us that is offered to Lord. It always helps us to suppress that. But we also have to take uh, precautions on our own. We have to be very proactive about reflecting every day. Hey, whom am I? Did I come across hard on somebody today? 
Did I make statements that could have offended others? Maybe that person never responded to you. But internally, that person would have felt it, right? I've had some experiences. That's why I'm able to tell you this. And um, so having that reflection really helps. So um, the, the point here is um, Brahma, who is uh, the secondary creator of this universe. He understands the knowledge. I mean, he heard it and he understood it. And then we also heard some leelas where uh, a demon came and stored it from his ears and all that, right? And it was restored back by the Lord. Uh, but the fact that it is mentioned that he read the Vedas three times, scrutinizingly, is more for us to understand that somebody like Brahma, who was supremely intelligent, who designed his entire uh, creation, he went and read the Vedas three times and he came to this conclusion that um, the best way to serve the Lord is to, and first of all, he establishes Krishna as a Supreme Personality of Godhead. And secondly, he says the best way to uh, perform devotional service is to serve him and his devotees. So that's what we have to take away. And we shouldn't have any more speculation on this. Uh, I know some without uh, going into a lot of details, people have analytical minds and they try to introspect this, split it apart, fight hundred different ways, ask thousand questions on this. But at the end of the day, whether it is this or whether uh, whatever the acharyas have prescribed to us, beyond a point, we just have to accept and follow. There's no point asking this analytical questions just because you have an analytical mind, right? So, um, there are two things that comes into play, right? One is the mercy of the Lord and the other is our endeavor. We saw that through the Damodar Leela. So um, endeavor is there, but people ask, I'm doing all these things, you know, I'm been chanting for so many years and I've been serving the devotees, been following all the Yakadasis promptly uh, fasting. Sometimes I even do uh, near gel, uh, but I'm not able to experience that bliss um, the mercy aspect is there and we cannot say to the Lord, I did all this. Now you have to give me 10 out of 10 and give me that mercy and uh, experience, make me experience that bliss um, and make me a pure devotee. We cannot demand to the Lord. I mean, we see so many prayers of Acharyas where they are in their songs and, you know, Sri Radhika sings so beautifully sometimes in the morning. All these so uh, songs of the Acharyas are uh, pointing to one thing, right? They are saying, I, I, it's up to you, Lord. You can handle me however you want, okay? But give me this opportunity to serve you birth after birth after birth. That's all they're asking, right? Am I right? So um, we have to cultivate that move. And, and uh, Rupa Goswami has uh, the other day you told me those three things, right? Nischaya, Dairiya, and Utsaha, Nischaya, Dairiya. So we need to have that patience, we need to have enthusiasm, and we should have the determination, all three together. So um, it just occurred to me as I was reading that fact that Brahma read it three times to come to, come to that conclusion. It is not for him, it is for us. He's re-emphasizing that. Um, but then there is also other things you know, fighting with the materialist. That happens all, all the time because the materialist somehow thinks that, uh, how can they be so blissful? So we have that, there are two, two aspects here. One is we perform all these, we perform devotional service. We try to stay in the path, at least we may not be perfect, but we try to stay in the path. We try to follow the four regulative principles. Uh, we try to read Srimad Bhagavatam every day. We try to associate with devotees. Um, we try to do seva, we try to do deity worship, we all do that. But then we also experience struggles. Whereas a common man uh, who doesn't have exposure to all of this or who may not even care about all of this, may be wealthy, may be enjoying life. At that time, a thought occurs in your mind. I'm doing all this and I'm, I'm not progressing, but look at this person, you know, he's, uh, 
Yesterday he was in Toyota, today he's coming in Mercedes and it tends to create some uh, agitation in your mind. How come the Lord is not giving me all these things? So um, that is one aspect of it. The materialist, on the other hand, also when they see us in Harinam, for example, and when we are chanting and dancing so enthusiastically, so happily, uh, they tend to think, you know, how come I'm doing everything I can to be happy, but I'm not as happy as them. That's a good thing, you know, if they come and ask you. So uh, Radharat Swami Maharaj explains this in, uh, I think this happened in the late 90s. Uh, in downtown London, there is a place called Piccadilly Circus or something like that. Um, is it true? Mm -hmm. Right. So is that a very popular place? Yeah, yeah it's like Times Square. Times Square yeah. kind of London. So there, uh, uh, devotees in large numbers, I don't know the, how many people were there, both Mataji's and uh, Prabhu's, they were doing uh, Harinam Sankirtan in downtown Piccadilly. So uh, very joyfully, you know, uh, raising their hands and dancing and Kirtan was going on in full swing. And then uh, that is the place where, you know, common place where young lovers also come, you know, people come to spend time there. And uh, Maharaj explains that some of them were holding on to their girlfriends like tightly and all that. But then when they saw the devotees this way and that too, Mataji is on one side, Prabhu is on the other side. And Maharaj was maybe making a point in a jovial way. He said, we are, uh, you know, like embracing each other so tightly, but we are not as happy as they are. <laughs> so, <laughs> and um, so some people even came to them, came to the devotees and asked them, what is that you're taking? You know, you're so happy. Can I have the same medicine, whatever you're taking? And the devotees had to explain what that medicine was. And he also said uh, around that time, there was a, a, a millionaire son from uh, Kuwait. Um, you know, in, you have, in Kuwait, you have kings and then you have princes. That prince was sent on a holiday by his dad to London. And uh, he was coming in a, a big, uh, what is that biggest car, limousine. And with a driver and he was driving past through the Sankirtan. And Maharaj said, he saw them so happy, he told the driver, you keep going around a few times, I'm going to go and spend some time with them. And he started dancing with the, uh, you know, Sankirtan party. And then he told them, I believe, I came to, uh, my father sent me here to, you know, have a nice time. I've been looking to see where happiness is. And this is the one place where I found most happiness, right? So, there is also that aspect, but what mother, uh, the point there is materialist, even though they see and they, they might come to that conclusion, hey, maybe we are wasting our time here. We should be, you know, try to understand this path and maybe start practicing this, but they will always have a uh, objection in their mind. They will try to come up with a case why this is not, this cannot be true. You know, they, you cannot be so happy. I mean, I'm doing everything I can to be happy. How come? They're just dancing and, uh, you know, they're giving up everything in life as opposed to embracing everything in life and they're still happy. This is not possible. So they will try to come up with alternate arguments and we will face them time to time. And we see that every day, right? When we go and interact with people outside. Um, but anyway, so uh, ba back to this uh, verse, um, having understood the Vedas, Brahma is so confidently saying, this is the path and for, it is for us to uh, embrace it. Um, we can, I'm not ask, I'm not telling nobody should uh, logically think about it and ask questions and reason with them, but at some point in time, you have to accept it. And Prabhupada also says that in many lectures, just, you know, in many Q and A's, he says, why don't you just stop arguing with me and just listen to me and then take this and then see for yourself. So, um, that's the that's my understanding of this verse. Any uh, any questions? Any thoughts? If not, we'll go to the next verse. Two two three five. Bhagavan sarva bhuteshu. Lakshita swatmana hari. Drishyer. 
बुद्धि अधिबीर दृष्टा लक्षण अनुमापका translation the personality of godhead lord shri krishna is in every living being along with the individual soul and the fact is perceived and hypothesized in our acts of seeing and taking help from the intelligence this is a very long purport um do you think i can read parts of it um the general argument of the common man is that since the lord is not visible to our eyes how can one either surrender on to him or render transcendental loving service on to him to such a common man here is a practical suggestion given by sri la sukadev goswami as to how one can perceive the supreme lord by reason and perception actually the lord is not perceivable by our present materialist senses but one is convinced of the presence of the lord by a practical service attitude there is a revelation by the lord's mercy and such a pure devotee of the lord can perceive the lord's presence always and anywhere he can perceive that intelligence is the form direction of the paramatma plenary portion of the personality of god the presence of paramatma in everyone's company is not very difficult to realize even for a common man the procedure is as follows one can perceive one's self identification and feel positively that he exists he may not feel it very abruptly but by using a little intelligence he can feel that he is not the body he can feel that the hand the leg the head the hair and the limbs are all his bodily parts and parcels but as such the hand the leg the head etc cannot be identified with his self therefore just by using intelligence he can distinguish and separate his self from other things that he sees so the natural conclusion is that the living being either man or beast is the seer and he sees besides himself all other things so there is a difference between the seer and the seen now by a little use of vision sorry by a little use of intelligence we can also readily agree that the living being who sees the things beyond himself by ordinary vision has no power to see or to move independently all our ordinary actions and perceptions depend on the various forms of energy supplied to us by nature in various combinations our senses of perception and of action that is to say our five perceptive senses of hearing touch sight taste smell as well as five senses of action namely hands legs speech evacuation organs and reproductive organs and also our three subtle senses namely mind intelligence and ego are all supplied to us by various arrangements of gross or subtle forms of natural energy and it is equally evident that our objects of perception are nothing but the products of inexhaustible inexhaustible permutations and combinations of the forms taken by natural energy as this conclusively proves that the ordinary living being has no independent power of perception of the or of motion as we undoubtedly feel our existence being conditioned by nat- nature's energy we conclude that he who sees his spirit and that is and that the senses as well as the objects of perception or material the spiritual quality of the seer is manifest in our dissatisfaction with the limited state of materially conditioned existence that is the difference between spirit and matter so i'll probably stop here because it's a long purport so um what here uh, the inst- the emphasis is given on how do we see god how do we feel him how do we perceive him so a um, lot of people come and say like prabhupad says in the purport i'm not able to, okay you're asking me to surrender to this lord but i cannot see this lord so how do i know you know whom i'm surrendering to or how do i perceive this lord um here there is some explanation given as to how we have very we have our limitations and that we can we can understand we have material senses our eyes can only see this far um our mind can only perceive so much we have seen the, all of that we understand um, without going into all these details of course we have our sense objects uh the uh, the 13 sense objects that we have and through which we feel various things in this world we perceive various things in this world but that is not enough to perceive who the lord is right so um the lord can be perceived as if we have proper 
training and if we really take it seriously, the Paramatma realization comes. That's what the yogis in Himalayas do, right? They try to see the Paramatma in their heart. That is one way to do it, but it's a long path, right? Uh, for people in Kali Yuga, it is not recommended because we don't have that kind of time and we don't have that kind of, we cannot put that kind of effort also. And even if we try to, if we are imperfect, we may not achieve that goal. So in Brahma Samhita, Brahma gives that wonderful prayer to Lord Sri Krishna about um, applying the ointment of love on your eyes and seeing the Lord with that uh, vision, right? So how does, a little discussion here, how does one develop, what is that ointment of love really means in Brahma Samhita, anyone? And how do we apply that and see the Lord? Service attitude. Hmm? Service attitude. Service attitude, yeah, that's one aspect of it. By hearing about the Lord and how He is yeah. with His devotees, which are love, by right. hearing we can see them. Right, so um, in Krishna book, I think Prabhupada says in one of the chapters, I couldn't remember which one, uh, very similar to what you explained, that um, if we want to, we have heard this before, I'm not saying you would have never heard this. But if you want to uh, know who Sachin Tandulkar is, for example, and you, 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 you want to first know about him, right? And once you know more and more about him, not only his prowess in, in the world of cricket, uh, but what kind of a human being is, he's generally portrayed as a very gentle, compassionate man. He's into so many um, philanthropical uh, things, etc. So uh, one starts to develop a liking for him, you know, not only as a cricketer, but also as a human being. And then suddenly, you know, the next thing you know, you adore him, right? I'm sorry, I don't know much about uh, American football who's <laughs> revered like that. Um, so um, very similarly, Prabhupada says, if you want to love the Lord, first of all, try to know about him. And fortunately for us, um, in Vedas and in our path of uh, Gaudiya Vaishna Sampradaya, there is a lot of description given about who the Lord is, you know, to the point where what he has for breakfast, that and next and things are described, right? How does he spend his time in Goloka Vrindavan? Uh, literally, he does not perform any job like anybody does. He's enjoying, but at the same time, he's having this loving exchange with uh, all the entities in uh, that serving him uh, and what is the swarupa of each entity how they serve the lord including a flower to uh, Srimati radharani and her associates uh, how how he enjoys kachori all that is given right so we are very fortunate so if we can invest time in reading scriptures and also trying to understand the glories of the Lord, uh, his characteristics, then we start to develop a liking for him, right? And love doesn't come merely from knowledge, right? We all agree. So the knowledge has to be applied, right? Um, that's why it's taking a lot of time for me. I, I applied very slowly, but my uh, realization is one, looking at other devotees in this community as well as outside people who have the taste for uh, uh, serving the Lord, uh, who are very enthusiastic to serve the Lord. Well, my observation is they are applying a lot of these things, right? So um, one of the important application is to serve other devotees. The Lord is pleased when the devotees are pleased, right? And we also have heard the story in Sri Sampradaya right? Uh, I forget the name of the Alvar who, Kanchipurna, who, um, uh, you know, fans the Lord every day, Vardraj, and then he has, he's so dear to the Lord that he's able to talk to him every day. And then one day he asks, how come you gave him liberation and I'm here fanning every day? <laughs> That's because you're so, trying to serve me directly, whereas he's trying to serve other devotees. I mean, you know all that story, right? So the Lord is pleased when we serve other devotees. 
Um, and it's again back to what we discussed earlier because of the Kali Yuga and due to our uh, contaminated mind, sometimes it's very difficult to serve everyone equally. But it's okay, you serve whom you like first and slowly start to develop from there. But at the end of the day, we have to, the Lord is pleased when we can serve everybody equally. And um, so sometimes it's hard to serve someone who doesn't reciprocate, we get discouraged. Uh, but it doesn't matter, do your part and leave the rest to the Lord. You know, don't immediately get discouraged and say, you know, I'm never going to talk to this person or going to approach, you know, they are, they don't, they are uh, responding abruptly or they don't even respond. Um, you know, let's overcome that part, you know, and um, that's an austerity we have to go through. And as you see, if you're applying yourself, that's where the application comes. We hear all these things, but when it comes to application, it becomes a problem, right? And it is said that in the path of devotional service, obstacles are to be expected. It's not a rosy path, you know, where you start applying and everything works, falls in place straight away. No, the Lord wants you to uh, struggle, right? Strive. Isn't, I think you also mentioned that several times. The Lord wants to see how sincere you are in striving and uh, he wants to know how much how painstaking, how painstaking you are, right? Progress. Right. But devotional service at the end of the day is also joyfully performed. So I don't want to anybody to think, you know, we have to go through pains all the time. But but we have to expect obstacles. And when obstacle comes, our mood should be, how, how is this going to purify me? Maybe there is a reason why this obstacle is coming. But let me not get discouraged. Let me not... Uh, start um, you know, re uh, responding to the devotee in a, in a manner where you're expressing your frustration and all that. Uh, and I know it comes with practice and I can say for myself, uh, it's not easy, but that's what the scriptures say. You know, we have to tolerate. Tolerance is one of the important elements, right? And these are all uh, tests for us to see how well we tolerate our situation. And we are always pleasant to other devotees. We serve them. Of course, we are not going to take, uh, uh, what do you say in Hindi? Galis. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So we, we don't have to be treated badly, but we take the precaution. So uh, Maharaj always says, if we have to respect everyone. Sometimes we have to respect people by keeping a distance. That's the respect we offer. But in our heart, we are always praying for their progress. So, um, so I think it all started with this application of love. So once we uh, can develop such an attitude and develop such a mood, um, then we can start to reciprocate with the Lord. So um, there's a lot to be said in this purport, but uh, it's already 8.50. I'll pause here. Uh, any points for discussion? And once again, forgive me for my shortcomings. Yeah, we have, I think we can finish the purport. Um, we can. Sure. If there are no questions or comments, yeah. If there is any points for discussion, I don't know. Prem Sindhu Prabhu, you have anything to add? I, I, I have a couple of points. Sure. Uh, sure. Was, was, when you said that you know about obstacles, that mm -hmm. it's not. But uh, it's also said in Bhagavatam that if you take shelter of the lotus feet of the Lord, the problem is you know, that's compared to the ocean becomes the water containing the calf's hoof print. Right? So yeah. if one is sincere in their endeavor, in their service, then all these problems become insignificant. Right. And of course, I'm just saying it, but uh, that is it's the issue. So we, that see, that's where the faith comes, you know, like yeah. Prahlad Maharaj. He was not afraid when they were throwing him into fire or under the legs of an elephant or in a snake pit. He was not anxious. He was because he had that faith that the Lord will protect. Similarly, if we have the faith that if we follow the instructions, however troublesome it can be sometimes, depending on our mind and our conditioning, if we can stay the path and follow the instructions, tolerate where we need to tolerate. I think the Lord will reciprocate, is my opinion, but others can. You have anything to add to that? Okay. Yeah.
I was just thinking said about the eyes are not seeing the object, it's the the direction from the super soul, or it's our consciousness that is that is a different way of perceiving things. Like we say that girl passing on the road, a man sees or materialist sees as an object of enjoyment, a tiger sees it as a something to eat, and a devotee sees it as some someone I can you know help Krishna consciousness. So based on our consciousness, we are seeing, and the more pure we are in our heart, we can hear the super soul and direction from the super mm. soul. See properly things based on the Shastra, Shastra Jikshu. I have a counter question there. So many times, you know, and, and there's nothing wrong about this, but devotee, you tend to hear from devotees, you know, I did this because uh, the Lord instructed me to act like this, right? Um, how do we know whether it's the Lord who instructed or is it the Maya that instructed? So, Guru Sadhu and Shastra. Okay. That whatever is coming from it should be consulted and should be confirmed by Thank you. So the, the last point I want to make here is uh, two things. One is, um, what is pleasing to the Lord? Sometimes it's hard to know. People ask me, how do I know I please Krishna? Um, I also had these questions many a times. And what I've found out after talking to a number of senior devotees is, how much are you able to follow the Guru's instruction? Because Guru, uh, Guru's words, is in alignment with the Lord's words. Guru is a representation of Lord. So, in fact, in certain areas of the scripture, it's mentioned that he is not different than Vishnu himself, right? So, when the Guru says, according to your, because the Guru knows you, you know, and he gives you instruction. If you follow that instruction, and if you please him, then you have pleased the Lord. That's another thing, keeping in mind. So, Second is that uh, I've been hearing two discourses by Swamanas uh, Ananda Maharaj, mm -hmm. which is exactly what he said. Because there is only one person on the earth who knows how to please the Lord. And that is uh, except the spiritual master, nobody knows how to be uh, satisfied the Lord. So that's why if all of the spiritual master's instructions, all other things will So we are not talking about a single guru or anything. We are talking about all Jiksha gurus, Jiksha gurus, all which is tattwa. So if this the discourse, sorry, I should have mentioned the discourse was on Guru Tattwa. The whole thing about the spiritual masters. So that's what you're saying, is that only they understand how to that is said. Thank you, Prabhupada. Thank you. No, I heard it somewhere, so I was also trying to answer that question. And the last thing I wanted to close out saying that uh, I heard from Premalas Prabhu uh, that when we chant sincerely, when we chant uh, in the right mood, and we know what that right mood is, right? Pranara peace, Sunichena. So also avoiding the 10 offenses. If we uh, chant in the right mood, then we are creating the destiny for our future body, whatever that body we are going to take. So that's a I thought he, that was a very powerful point he made. So I try to remember that sometimes, right? So chanting is not just for now and for tomorrow. Of course, that is uh, Lord Chaitanya has said of all the nine process of devotional service, that's the most important part. So that's why we take so much uh, focus and emphasis on chanting in the morning and chanting properly in proper mood. Um, but it's also for our future uh, lives that we are going to take. So we have to pay attention. And of course, it's, as I said, it's also a lesson for me. Thank you very much. You want to do that?
Okay. I, I, I can. No, because you said 845, I'm trying to. Okay. Um, let me let me finish the purple. Okay. If you want to. Um, <clears throat> our senses of perception, you can start. There are some less intelligent arguments from there, you are right? Yeah, I think they are So there are some less intelligent arguments that matter, uh, develop the power of seeing and moving as a certain organic development. But such an argument cannot be accepted because there is no experimental evidence that matter has uh, anywhere uh, producing a living uh, produced a living entity plus no feature however present idle talks regarding future development of matter into spirit are actually foolish because no matter has ever developed the power of seeing or moving in any part of the world therefore it is definite that matter and spirit are two different identities and this conclusion is arrived at by the use of intelligence. Now we come to the point that the things which are seen by a little use of intelligence cannot be animate unless we accept someone as the user, as the user of or director of intelligence of the intelligence. Intelligence gives one direction like some other like some higher authority, and the living being cannot see or move or eat or do anything without the use of intelligence. When one fails to take advantage of intelligence, he becomes a deranged man. And so a living being is dependent on intelligence or the direction of a superior being. Such intelligence is all pervading. Every living being has his intelligence and this intelligence being the direction of some higher authority is just like a father giving direction to his son. The higher authority who is present and residing within every individual living being is the super self. At this point in our investigation, we may consider the following question. On the one hand, we realize that all our perceptions and activities are conditioned by arrangements of material nature. Yet we also ordinarily feel and say, I am perceiving or I am being. Therefore, we can say that our material senses of perception and action are moving because we are identifying the self with the material body and that the uh, superior principle of super self is guiding and supplying us according to our desire. By taking advantage of the guidance of super self in the form of intelligence, we can either continue to study and to put into practice our conclusion that I am not this body. Or we can choose to remain in the false material identification, fancying ourselves to be the possessors and doers. Our freedom consists in orienting our desire either toward the ignorant material misconception or the true, spir or the true spiritual conception. We can easily attain to the true spiritual conception by recognizing the super self, Paramatma, to be our friend and guide and by dovetailing our intelligence with the superior intelligence of Paramatma. The super self and the individual self are both spirit and therefore the super self and the individual self are both qualitatively one and distinct from matter. But the super self and the individual self cannot be on an equal level because the super self gives direction or supplies intelligence and the individual self follows the direction and thus actions are performed properly. The individual is completely dependent on the direction of the super self because in every step the individual self follows the direction of the super self in the matter of seeing, hearing, thinking, feeling, willing, etc. So far as common sense is concerned, we come to the conclusion that there are three identities namely matter, spirit, and super spirit. Now, if we go to the Bhagavad Gita or the Vedic intelligence, we can further understand that all three identities, namely matter, individual spirit, and the super spirit are all dependent on the Supreme Personality of Godhead. The super self is a partial representation or plenary portion of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. 
Bhagavad Gita affirms that the Supreme Personality of Godhead dominates all over the material world by his partial representation only. God is great and he cannot be simply an ordered supplier of the individual selves. Therefore, the super self cannot be a full representation of the Supreme Self, Purushottam, the absolute personality of Godhead. Realization of the super self by the individual self is the beginning of self realization. Mm -hmm. And by the process of such self-realization, one is able to realize the Supreme Personality of Godhead by intelligence. By the help of authorized scriptures and principally by the grace of the Lord. The Bhagavad Gita is the preliminary conception of the Personality of Godhead, Sri Krishna and Srila Bhagavatam is a further explanation of the science of Godhead. So if we stick to our determination and pray for the mercy of the Director of Intelligence, sitting within the same bodily tree like the bird sitting with another bird and explaining operations, certainly the purport of the revealed information in the Vedas becomes clear to our vision. And there is no difficulty in realizing the Supreme Personality of God in vast day. The intelligent man therefore, after many births of such use of intelligence, surrenders himself at the lotus feet of Vasudev as confirmed in the book of Sangha. Jai. Grantha Chimad Bhagavatam ki jai. Shri Labhavad ki jai. Gaur Premanande. Gaur Premanande.